Hello everybody, this is Movie Grades, and in this episode of Movie Grades, we are going to be talking about Thor Ragnarok, and I'm joined with Jason Case, Russ, Tony Beers. I think we have different opinions on this movie, but we'll talk about, we want to start with the plot or the characters. I'll, I'll tell the plot real quick. Thor is coming back from a fight with Surtur. Well, he's kind of like tricking Surtur into being like the James Bond villain and telling him what's going on. So he's kind of finding out what's going on. He figures out that Surtur is trying to bring about Ragnarok. Gets his head, basically, and takes it back to Asgard where he finds out that Loki for this whole time is actually Odin. So he demands that Loki finds Odin and then Odin reveals that he's dying and he warns them that hell is coming and they have to stop Pella and Ragnarok, basically, and that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think the character selection was good. I mean, the actors were good for who they played. Except for didn't you say you 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 want who said Me you want Messier would have been, been me. Been I bad. I said I thought Jeff Goldblum as the Grandmaster was miscast. It should have been Matt Frewer. I think he would have been a good job, but I think Jeff Goldblum did good enough in my opinion. Well, I, mean, I I told you I thought about Jeff Goldblum. I, I yeah. mean, for what it was, I thought there was too much yeah, of it. Yeah. I think it hurt because the movie a little bit. I mean, in my opinion, I could be wrong, but... Well, the collector wasn't in the movie as long as, as Grandmaster. I mean, yeah, he, he right. was in it just enough, I thought. Right, and, yeah. and I think if you would have had the same amount of screen time with Jeff Goldblum and this, as you did with the collector, Benicio Del Toro, yeah. it would have probably been better. It would have helped out the movie. It would have helped definitely. the movie out better, I think. But, yeah, and also, he's not really <laughs> he's not really acting that much. He's just Jeff Goldblum being Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> One thing I do want to say about it is, uh, and this is actually a reason that Jeff Goldblum didn't do a lot for me, aside from, in my opinion, the miscasting. They were trying to have him be the comedy relief, but unfortunately in this movie they were kind of overdoing it with the comedy to begin with, so yeah. it didn't really help his character stand out in any way. Yeah. It yeah. just seemed like Jeff Goldblum was there, and it was like... <laughs> that's that's how I took it. And the, thing. and the thing is, it's, being that he's the head of Sakaar, I believe the, the plot is called, yeah. in, this, in this rendition, I mean, personally, I would have liked a small cameo by the Red King and in some way, but the Red King. yeah, he's the leader of Sakaar in okay. uh, in the Planet Hulk storyline. I've never, I haven't read that one. Well, that's why I'm telling you. Okay. Like I said, rather than Jeff Golden just being there, so I mean. If they hadn't focused so much on the comedy, I think that would have helped the movie out a lot. Because, like I said, I don't mind that eighty per that they said that eighty percent of the dialogue was improv. That's fine, but. One thing a few critics said, and I actually have to agree with this, it almost took you out of the movie a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. you, you feel like you're watching them, uh, like, you're basically, you feel like you're watching Chris Hemsworth go up against Mark Ruffalo, not uh, Thor going up against the Hulk because of how much they overemphasize the comedy in it. And I could kind of see that. I mean, I still like Jeff Goldblum. But it would be interesting if uh, the collector wasn't in it. That would have been more interesting because they did that in. The Amazing Spider-Man, or no, Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon. They had, they had, they had. Uh, I believe they had something with the Collector and Grant and the Grandmaster as hmm. going up against each other. The Collector had his form. Of, he had his superheroes, and the Grandmaster had his superheroes, and they would go up against each other. They would fight whoever won, you know. But yeah, it would be interesting if maybe if they did get a... Uh, they also if they got him, got him back, back and maybe they did something like that, maybe it would have made it more interesting. Because at least, at least Jeff Goldblum would have somebody to play off of instead of yeah. playing off of Loki and Thor. I think okay. it would I think it would have been better to see Plus brother, they, brother they, versus brother. Yeah, it they, they been, never even mentioned that they were brothers. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's what kind of might have been... A lot of people might have been disappointed. I'm actually glad you mentioned that, Jay, because it actually brings around another issue that I had with the movie. They tried to put too much in. They should have split into two movies. There was just too much going on, and they really didn't give the opportunity to flesh out the characters enough that you really could invest enough in, in each of the characters. I know at one point Jay and Tony were arguing over the characteristics of one of the, of one of the characters, but my reasoning for it was, yeah, they didn't give that character enough to really you know flesh the character out, so you actually understood what the character's motivations were and everything. They just kind of just showed up briefly, and that was it. Like for instance, Kate Blanchett, I guess she's been in doing movies 
moves long enough where she knows how to work with what she has, and she did an amazing job, and she God, she was hot, too. <laughs> but I think Tessa Thompson might be a bit more of a newbie in comparison. She did not know how to do it the way Kate Blanchett did, and it really showed. I just thought she was too much of a perfect character to me. I just, she, like, everything she did, I, I felt that she was good at. She needed a little bit more humility, in my opinion. Oh. You were know saying about Helen? Hell, uh, what, um... I think they did a good job with Hell. I mean, yeah. at least they kept us in continuity, unlike X Men Apocalypse. Because at least in this, at least in remember how it's in X Men Apocalypse that Mystique is supposed to be the mother of yeah of Nightcrawler or Wagner. Well, in this movie, actually, Loki is supposed to be the father of Hela. But right. at least they said, at least they switched, changed it up, and says, "Well, we'll make." Hella, the firstborn of Odin. So at least they, I want to say fix that concept. At least they changed it from the comic, I and think that it, was well done. I think. Well, yeah, I think. You know, some people would complain, and I, you know, I'm I'm one of the people that usually do complain about something like that. But it made more sense in the story. Yeah. Then it wouldn't if they said it was Loki's daughter, daughter. It wouldn't really makes too much. Because he sense. doesn't look like he'd be. A, if and if it was daughter, she would have to be like. Young, like a baby. We well, are... yeah, but the, I, I, I didn't have a problem with that, but this, this, like the story, I mean, they, they needed a reason why Hela would uh, attack Asgard and be mad at Thor and Loki, and it's because that she, she was the firstborn and therefore felt that she's owed the, the, the throne and stuff like that. And since they brought that up, actually, I also, I'd like to mention something that, while I did like, it conflicted with something I didn't. I liked how they showed that despite what everything Odin says about peace treaties and everything, that is not how the Asgardians wound up acqu acquiring their wealth. So you basically right. find out the real history is a lot of bloodshed and, and, and wars and everything. But unfortunately, where they fell short was showing the whole family dynamic between Thor, Loki, and Hela. They really didn't explore that, especially when Thor is fighting her at the end. Again, a case where they really didn't flush it out enough, I thought. Exactly. Jason? Uh, I'm just going to go on your point. A lot of that is because, and we've all said this, they put a lot in there. Yeah. Right. They had a short period of time to put a lot in there. Mm -hmm. And I th again, I think that hurt this movie a yeah. little bit because it was all over the place. Right. Yeah. Um, it it, and I think I told you about how you know the opening scene and then the Doctor Strange thing and then, and then it went you know and then oh he's on this planet with a bunch of junk everywhere and these people want to eat him and then they want to make him a warrior and then, <laughs> it, I mean it's just all over the place and right. I yeah. I think um and, and going with what Russell said I think they. Put way too much in there. Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of information that and and then it, I th I think it muddled things. Oh yeah. Oh. In a, in a way and, and like I said I mean the Jeff Goldblum thing I mean that like I said they showed him way too much. I yeah. I felt if you would have got rid of some of the stuff with him it could explain a little bit more of Valkyrie or mm, right, yeah. you know or, why is you know what what's this Ragnarok what is the prophecy of Ragnarok. We only heard, still, heard it mentioned, and we've seen a vision of it in what? It was in one of the Avengers movies. I think it was the second one, wasn't it? Yeah. Ultron. Oh, uh, it, it, it just, I agree, I gotta agree with Russell, which is, Russell, I, I don't agree with you very much, but I do this time. <laughs> um, no, I, I do think that, it, again, it's very hard to invest in, 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 in her as a character specifically because you didn't really find out until Loki found out the information of why because he, no, you're he you're talking about Hela or Valkyrie? No, Valkyrie. Okay. <coughs> and the same with Helena. Yeah, yeah. Or Hela. I'm sorry. I said Helena. Hela. Never mentioned in any of the other movies for obvious reasons. Right. Now we know why. Yeah. Um, and as, as far as Thor goes, or I mean not Thor, but Odin, he was a dictator in a, you know, with different worlds and they get master wealth by conquering other worlds. But in that, in that essence, he also seen the bloodshed and everything that went with it, and it changed his whole perspective on everything, right. which is what he taught Thor in the first movie. Remember yeah. how Thor was being a brat? Yeah. That's so, the best so, word so I can put. He, so you're saying he's basically wants Thor to be better than him. Than he yeah. was. He yeah. learned the hard way by yeah. being from the bloodshed and all the wars fought yeah. and all that. 
it, it gave him humility of watching people suffer. Like, oh, now yeah. he's got to... Kind of like how the Grinch stole Christmas kind of thing. Yeah. And he stole all the Christmas trees, but the kids were still singing. And his heart grew three times that day. <laughs> but, no, it, it, it's the same analogy. I mean, yeah. and, and going from that, I had a problem with, with, with Valkyrie not being explained so much. Hello, you know, we got an explanation, but it was a quick explanation. I, I wish they would have developed that a little bit more yeah. as well. And with Olden. Yeah. Why yeah. was Olden dying? Yeah. Wasn't explained. It didn't give any explanation whatsoever. And he just he floated just floated away, away <laughs> like a butterfly. Yeah. Did he yeah. run out of life force? Did he yeah. use maybe, up maybe, his maybe, power? Maybe being on Earth he was too old or something because he was on a different world. Maybe he just aged. Did he or... give up on life because his <laughs> wife was killed? Yeah. I mean... I yeah, would I mean, love an explanation I, yeah, of why. They didn't. They needed that. And, and I'm gonna go back to the collector. I would have liked to see him in the movie because then it would at least like bring the whole guardians instead yeah. of kind of going forward with with you know with um, the Infinity War movie. At least it would set it up more to have something like a predecessor. Well, yeah. Because that's what's gonna happen. Is that's why I was hoping that the... I understand with Guardians of the Galaxy, it was just a continuation of the first movie. But it would have been cool if we saw maybe like an after credit scene in that movie just to show them meeting up with the Avengers or Spider-Man. I feel like that's how, if they were going to do Volume 2, that's what they were going to do. But yeah. if they had done it in this movie with the Collector meeting up with his brother, at least it would have connected those two mm, franchises yeah. together instead of us now... They're gonna throw all, so, all throw everything at us in one fell swoop with, with Star Lord, Lord, Thor, Captain America, Hulk, Spider Man, like, and Iron Man. You know, and well, the like, Guardians. You, you, Guardians. You, you brought that up earlier, and that is one of my problems with the movie is they didn't they didn't connect. They didn't, there wasn't was any no uh, infin the dots. An Infinity Stone in it to to connect. It to yeah, the that's why I'm still thinking that Heimdall. Is going to be the last stone because of the whole part <laughs> because of Soul Stone's orange because it starts with an H and the thing yeah. in his chest is, all, is, 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 is the gem and his eyes are orange and he can see the souls of all nine realms and blah blah blah. He, he's like the one guys that are doing the Star Wars thing trying to figure out who Ray's parents are. Right. Yeah. They got nine hundred <laughs> different hypotheses. Don't give him any ideas. I know, but again, going with that. Or who, I, or who Snoke I, is. Yeah. yeah. I can see your thing with the Collector, but in essence, this movie already had a bunch of stuff right. in it, and I think that would have even cluttered it a little bit more. They well, needed to make two separate movies. There's yeah. no way around but it. But they weren't going to do that because it was Avengers coming out next year. Yeah. Yeah, I think and, and like, they were going to do two movies with that one as yeah, well, exactly. so they probably don't want to do I, I, and I, they, they, they just, and I think the, they just needed to cut some of, a lot of the, not, not, not every character or anything, but like the, of the time. Like like I was I was telling you uh, when you came over, mm -hmm. the, the Doctor Strange that could have been cut down to like a minute and that that, yeah. that had been good enough. And I agreed with you. I, I mean I liked the scene, but I think it was a little too long. I think they just I mean they they played comedic. around with it a little bit. Yeah, the, comedic the, like comedic. Yeah, they exactly. They went overboard with the comedic. That was the problem. And I think that's what they were trying to do with this movie. They wanted to make it more comedic than yeah. serious. Because when you think when because with Civil War. Captain America, you always think he's the serious, the serious, serious character. But with Thor, you know, he drinks, you know, he par, he's like the part. Here's my take, though. There's being comical, and then there's overdoing it, which is like most of this movie. I thought it's like they didn't know when to dial it back, and like if you took out at least half of that. We could have maybe gotten, you know, more plot and everything rather than just about 50 million more jokes. I will, I will add to that and I'll say, yeah, the, the tone was was off. That's that's oh, what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, it, it reminds, you know, they, they always say that Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. is very humorous. That's what I think they were trying but to go for. What, yeah, they didn't have the balance here. You see, with, see, with, with Spider-Man, well, a lot of comical stuff in it, too. Right, right. I mean, you, you look at uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, which is very funny, but it, it had a lot of serious moments. Like the last one, you know, Yondu dies. And I felt a lot more for Yondu dying here than I did for Odin dying. I, I just didn't care for Odin dying. I had to fight back the tears seeing Yondu die. And here, the, uh, a lot of... And, well, you mentioned the, the Warriors 3. Yeah, they, they just knock him off in one shot. Like, what? 
Why? Yeah. yeah. So, mean, well, and, what's her name? Wasn't even is. Yeah, Sif. Sif. Well, she wasn't even in it. Yeah. So she's like on Earth or something because she was in the uh, Agents of Shield or something. Oh, she's on Earth. Right. And when well, well, she was, the thing, but, thing is, know. the the uh, audience that doesn't watch Agents of Shield like myself isn't gonna know that. And when Scourge, issue, issue. and when Scourge died, I didn't care. Hell, and we don't even know if she's dead. She could still be alive because well, her and well, Sartor could still. But be she alive. is the goddess of death. death so I mean. Where is she, you know, where is she gonna go? It's like, you, uh, I, I believe it's South Park or. or yeah, where South, do I gotta go, Detroit? Yeah, where am I gonna go, Detroit? Exactly. Where, where uh, Oklahoma in this case, right? Because that's where they. And well, we yeah. don't even know if these people are gonna make it to Oklahoma now with the sanctuary too. You know. Yeah. <laughs> that was not my first question after <laughs> going to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Um, again, I agree with a lot of your points and your points and everything, I think there was too much. I think the humor took away from the plot. Oh, yeah. I think a lot of this stems from Guardians of the Galaxy's success with the humor. Yeah. And I think they're trying to put it all in the Marvel movies thinking it's going to work, and it doesn't always work. No. Yeah. It, it depends on the characters. Like Star-Lord, yeah. you could tell he's just a, he's a smartass. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and, and but, like, when you try to deal with a character like Thor... It's not so well, you know, and it just don't. I think, see, I, I think it works with Thor. They just it overdid it. I yeah, think they overdid it. Well, yeah, I agree with you. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It, it, there's there's times when you do it, and then there's times when you don't do it. And I think it took away from the story. Yeah. I really do. I think yeah. there's way too much humor that, it, like I said, with in, in scenes with Jeff Goldblum was too much. Yeah. And then. I mean, even the ending scene with him was horrible. Yeah, that was. Uh, and they try, they try to they try to connect it to the to the collector's scene. Yeah. I mean, I know they did, but at the same time, I'm like, oh, I waited for this. I yeah. mean, that's exactly what I said when yeah. I seen it. I, yeah, I waited I, for this. Yeah, no, I didn't really. You know, that's much. like you know. The first going on a date scene was not working with out the, with the with the sanctuary. <laughs> that was yeah, awesome. That, that was yeah. That was what was it? The sanctuary too. Thanos. Yeah. Thanos, yeah. Thanos is shit. I knew what it was right away. I'm like, oh, that's Thanos. We, we didn't talk about Tessa Thompson very much. I, I mean, I, there's a reason for that. Well, I mean, I know she played. Well, actually, Vol she didn't. The char she's not, she her was, character. She's not her character. Not is not a Valkyrie, but we did see the scene where that white. Woman who was one of the Valkyries. That might have been the one we're familiar with. Had to sacrifice yeah. her life to save her version of Valkyrie or her Valkyrie because she was Scrapper One Forty Two, which is the comic she originated where Valkyrie originated from. I don't know if in the comic like Valkyrie's the character, and maybe in this movie they made a, a, the race not a race, but the the warriors, right. the female yeah. warriors were kind of like how the Amazon Amazons in the right. DC world are, you know, Wonder Woman's race. So Scrapper 142 is like Wonder Woman. I guess it's kind of like her code name. Yeah. So, um... She was a Valkyrie. She wasn't the Valkyrie. Yeah. But that was a cool scene. Like how they did that for scene. For one half a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. only showed it for briefly. and It was the painting. It was that whole painting. Yeah. And it looked like painting. Speaking of looking like painting... Like Jason says, get back to what we liked about it. Uh, the, visual, we, the visuals were The good. visuals were excellent. Yes. They, they, yes. The effects were cool. They really made... It looked like a Jack Kirby artwork. I mean, I, I agree. I think I think the fight scenes were great again and in the this. the fight scenes, the fight scenes were They were good. good. Um, the visuals were good, like you yeah. said. A lot of, it looked like they would use a lot of Jack Kirby's art and... Mm -hmm. Which is good. You got to pay homage to him because he was a great artist. Also, I heard it was so it was in tribute to. I think he would have been like seventy five or a hundred or something like that this year. So. Yeah, yeah. you think he would have been a hundred? Yeah. Probably yeah. closer to a hundred. Yeah. But he, I, I mean, the thing is, he. I mean, you got to pay homage to him because he was one of the originators. Yeah. Of the the comic design. And oh yeah. yeah was, I love the fact that they paid homage to him. What do you think of Stanley's cameo? I thought it was funny. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was it was like a cyborg. Like a cyborg. Funny. Andrew was cyborg with all these. That was cool. <laughs> no, not my hair. I mean, that was, it was cool. I mean, I I knew it was coming. You know, Stan Lee appears in all of them, so. Right. And I thought, um, like I said, Fenrir was really well done. Who? The the wolf. There was one part I did like. Um, as little as we did see Odin, is when Thor lost Mjolnir because Hela destroyed it. Oh, that was right. that was an awesome it. scene. Um. And then he had no confidence in anything he was doing after that because yeah. he but felt that Molnir was all his power. Yeah. And then Odin yeah. basically told him, "No, the yeah. power is you in you." Yeah. Yeah. 
And that yeah, was a good scene, fight, I he thought. Had a, he had to find him, his, his, his self. Yeah, he had to have yeah, confidence Come to terms that I could do this with. You know what? Basically, <laughs> Thor was thought he was lost without Mjolnir. I mean, and he had that great line where it's like, you're not the god of hammers. Yeah. <laughs> you're the god of light. Yeah, you're the god of light. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I thought that was a pretty good scene of what yeah. we did see of Odin. And I talked to you about Loki. Yeah. Loki in this movie, he's been a big part of all of them so far, but in this movie you could see the, the humility in him. Like, he was yeah. actually starting to become a good guy, in a way. Right, yeah, but in a way. Well, we know what's going to happen. He's probably going to go on Thanos' well, they, side, they, you know. At the end of the movie, he's like, uh, you know, I'm your savior. Here comes your savior to yeah. save you all again. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> and the gold statue. <laughs> and the what about that one scene where they do that setup thing where Thor, like, throws him at oh, the yeah. two guards? I like that. You know, it's like, I don't want to what, what, what did they call it? The, my sick brother or something? I don't know. But yeah, that was good. They and, were good scenes. They were good yeah. scenes. And I, I, I did like the guy in the that was on in the arena, the Korg. There you uh, yeah. yeah, he and, was and funny. His little, and his little insect buddy with, yeah. the, with the swords in his yeah. hands, they were cool. And he's like, you're just going to be another Doug. Yeah. Doug died yesterday. <laughs> Doug's, Doug's dead. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Korg. Yeah, I got this ship. You want to come? You know, yeah. he said that like twice in the movie. <laughs> We're uh, gonna start a revolution. It's just us two right now. It was cool seeing. It was I mean, cool. I, I, I did enjoy him. I, I wanted to mention that the, I liked the music in the movie. And you said yeah, yeah. Devo. Yeah, Mark Mothersbaugh did it. And by the way, folks, I'm a terrible fan. I'm a huge Devo fan, and every freaking time Mark Mothersbaugh does music for a movie, I can't tell it's him. Even though I'm a huge Devo fan. I'm a horrible fan. Yeah. Mark, I'm sorry I admit I'm a lousy fan who deserve better. So yeah, they, they used the song from the trailer, the immigrant song from uh, Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin. Yeah. And I love that, that the uses of it. They use it. It was the beginning and the, and the end, and the two uh, great fight scenes, and that song really gets you pumped up. And you're like, all right, you, you, Thor's gonna kick some ass now. You know, you it you know, got me excited whenever you, I heard this song. You know, I think we all agree on a lot of things here. I think, yeah. uh, I mean, there wasn't too much I didn't like about this movie. I like I said, I did think it was too much involved in it. I think the humor was a little too much. I think we all pretty much agree on those points as well. So, let's give a grade. Yeah. yeah, I think we should give it a grade, and I'll give it a solid B. This is B. Yeah, I'll be I'll be generous and give you like I there were some let's say I liked Hella, I liked the the, the, the look of uh Sakar, um and I thought the scene with uh, th where they were where they were doing a reference to the Willy Wonka tunnel, I liked the whole Omni Mover look as if it was a uh, Magic Kingdom attraction. So yeah, it was, it was it was decent at least, you know. It's I can't say that I that I regret seeing it completely, so for what it was I thought it was okay and the fight scenes were pretty cool too. I, I'm gonna give it a little bit lower than that. I didn't like it as well as I, I well Russ is probably being generous. She said, yeah. um, "This one I was kind of torn between a C plus and a B minus. I, I think I'm gonna give it a B minus because I did like some things about it. I think what hurt it again, we already talked about it, was there was a lot of stuff thrown in there. Yeah. I think there was too much humor involved. Yeah. I think that um, they didn't set up some of the characters well, like no, Valkyrie." Agreed. And Hella, I mean, we didn't get the story until actually when she showed up. Oh, this is what happened. Yeah. Um, I think um, I did like what, kind of like the human side of Loki. You want to call it human side of Loki. <laughs> I did like that. I did like that one part with Odin talking to Thor. Mm -hmm. um, and the, he, and fight he, scenes. he had like at least two or three visions of Odin. Odin, yeah, yeah. when he was getting beat down. and Yeah. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of like the scene in Rocky, like, one more round, Rock. That's yeah, what it reminded me of yeah. when I seen that. But um, like I said, I, I'm gonna give it a little bit lower. I, I think it I, luckily got a B minus because I really, I, I think my problem was I had a lot more higher expectations yeah. for this movie than yeah. what it trail, was. True. Oh, yeah. And I thought, like I was telling you, I've went into movies with low expectations and it totally blew me away. Yeah. And I've went into some with really great or high expectations and it went eh. So I walked out there and I'm like, eh, it was okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's how I felt about this one. Yeah. And I, I give it a B minus. I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna have to go higher on this one. I'm going to give it an A minus on this one. Wow. Yeah, I really <laughs> like this music. And the most, the character that had the most appeal in this was definitely uh, Kate Blanchett as hell. Yes. I think oh, she was yeah. the best character in this movie. Yes. 
But yeah, I guess as I give this movie an A minus, I think Guardians was better for me. I still like the comical thing about it. Um, I guess they kind of wanted to separate themselves from the from the first two, which were two were more serious. But definitely better than the Dark World. <laughs> no questions asked. On that. Um, I probably, actually like Dark World. I, I, I like Dark probably World on too. <laughs> par with the original Thor movie and. I really enjoy this, and I hope to see what they're going to bring with the next movie, which is Black Panther, so we'll see what, we'll talk about that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like we don't, as much as we complained, it sounds like we didn't like this movie, but I, I think, for the most part, we all did. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Jay liked it the least, yeah, apparently. Yeah, I did. Uh, but I, I'm going to give it a, a B. Um, like I said, I love the visuals, I love the fight scenes. I loved Hella. She's sexy as Hella. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I said that in the, in the, in our review of the trailer. I, I there's something about her performance and that outfit and the the look. Of, you know, Kate Blanchett. It just did it for me. As m most guys, I hope uh, I hope we see her again. I don't think uh, she's dead. I hope I hope well, Thanos uh, bring. Yeah. Remember, he can bring her back if she is dead with the Soul Stone. So. I have a feeling, or maybe that's why he's going after her, maybe to get her back. Yeah, I mean, uh, Thanos is, he, he is actually in love with death, and she is the, the goddess of death, so, so I think it might, it's an, might be I, her. I think it's an amalgam of her and death. And, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, like I said, I give it a, a B. A, this just a straight B, not a minus or plus, but just a B, and that I think that's pretty good. Well, that's our final thoughts on Thor Ragnarok, and we will see you in the next one. What's that? See you next see time. You next see time. You. This video is sponsored by the Crazy Kings of Toys. Check them out for all your toy needs and find out why they are so crazy. Find them at eBay, Bricklink, and Facebook. Links are in the description. For more Toxic Pop, visit our website at toxicpop1.wixsite.com slash toxicpop. Email us at toxicpop1 at gmail.com and check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash toxicpop1 and Instagram at instagram.com slash wearetoxicpop. Links are in the description.